guess one of my former pastoral friends would call it the hour for power. Amen. Right. Amen. So we, first of all, we like to say we just give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and every heart in the building. Amen. Mm -hmm. To the minister and the pastor of this church. Amen. Mm -hmm. God bless you. And to the first family, the absolute the first lady, we just say God bless you. Amen. Amen. Every smile upon you. I see pastor getting it right. Amen. <laughs> The Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. Well, to right. every elected official of this house and to all the great people of God, thank you from the bottom of my heart for inviting us here tonight. And truly, we have been blessed by this choir and it's now time for the Word of God. Amen. 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 Because of the time of strength and ask you tonight, return with me and as we welcome all those and uh, join us by social media to the house. Uh, well, actually, this is not our house, but along with the rock healer from the nation's broadcast, amen. amen. We are reminded of God's word that he sent his word to his people and it healed them. Mm -hmm. Come on with me to the book of Acts, the 27th chapter. We're going to read two verses. We're going to read verse, the first verse of that chapter and the last verse of that chapter. So that's verse 1 and verse 44. Acts 27, verse 1 and verse 44. And it reads, And when it was determined uh -huh. that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a satyrian of Augustus' band. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 44. And the rest of the, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces mm -hmm. of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Uh -huh. Will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? Neighbor. The preacher going to preach about. The preacher going to preach about. Drifting. Drifting. On broken pieces. On broken pieces. Oh, my God. Father, we thank you and give you praise for your word, and we just pray that it will touch the hearts of your people. Allow me to decrease that you may increase in me, and let them see you in all your glory. I ask this in Jesus' name, and God's people say amen. Amen. After going on 23 years of ministry, there is one thing that convinces me more than ever that our churches are filled with broken people. I watch how Christian people over the last 20 years interact with one another. Mm. Somebody said, mm, yeah, that's right. And I've come to realize, having gone through some brokenness myself, that broken people or hurt folk hurt other folk. Amen. Now we got a witness in here. Amen. Behind the praise and uh, all the higher education and the great works and confessions of faith, there still lies people within our churches who have been shipwrecked by their own decisions and the sins that so easily beset me. Amen. It's amazing to me that church people go through so great ex a, a, a strength and extremes mm -hmm. to hide their hurts mm -hmm. and their brokenness. Mm -hmm. I heard Peter Rollins once say, if you cannot speak about your brokenness, uh -huh. your brokenness will speak for you. Yeah. How about a witness yeah. again? How many of us even here at Jones' Grove? have watched people do certain things and say, I never thought they would do that. You see, as Christians, we, we, we play a part real well. You know, most of us ought to get Academy Awards for how we play it because, we, you know, we want to sing to everybody that we got everything together. That we don't have no ups and downs. You know, I'm preaching here. We, we, we want everybody to know that I'm highly favored and blessed of the Lord. Yet on the inside, God knows that we are weeping uh -huh. 
all night long. I, I guess uh, church people, uh, although we're not supposed to bring the world into the church, we still have some residue because you know how the world is. They don't like stuff that's broke. In our world today, if you're broken, you know, if, you, uh, if you don't work as well, then we, we just throw you away. But how many of us know God don't throw us away? That's why I love him so much. That no matter how broke you are, he's able to put you back together again. In fact, Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is close. Yeah. Uh -huh. To the broken heart. Yeah. And save those who are crushed in spirit. Yeah. I wonder who I'm preaching to tonight. That even though you look good with your sanctimonious clothes on, still on the inside, you are weeping tonight. Yeah. Life hadn't been as, as well as you planned it to be. And, and, and your best plans have seemed to crumble all in your face. Oh, yeah. But I got good news for you. I'm like the soldier now. If you've fallen by the wayside of life yeah. and your dreams are scattered, you are broken inside. Oh, yeah. You don't have to stay in the shape that you in right. because the Father wants to put right. you back together again. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's amazing to me uh -huh. that if we'll just surrender to Christ. Mm -hmm. He is able to transform our lives. Oh, yes. No matter how shipwrecked your life is, uh -huh. you may have been in divers and divers of sin. Uh -huh. You may have made some bad choices in life. Uh -huh. You may have fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, yes. But you ain't in the boat all by yourself, man. Uh -huh. All you gotta do is look around. Uh -huh. We all done made some mistakes. Uh -huh. Plans fall to pieces. Yeah. But how many folk I got in here tonight that know God will take what's left of what's been done and turn it into perfection? I didn't realize that uh, Sister Christine the other day that sometimes God uses our mess to give us a message. Right. I was talking to a gentleman and I'm gonna get into the text and I, a little did I know that he had gone through some of the things that I've gone through and, and, and he was just crying before me. Man. You know, it's something when you see a 60-year-old man break down in tears man. and say, I wish I could do it all over yes. again. No, no. But you know what I told him? You ain't got to worry about yesterday. No, no. All you got to do is give Jesus your life today. No. How many of us know that God will wash all your past away no. and put you on a road to prosperity and life? No. You see, nobody knew more about hardships and shipwreck than Paul. Mm -hmm. For the scripture records, Paul had already been shipwrecked three times and mm -hmm. suffered much. You know, Paul said, I've learned how to be abound and also a base. You know, yeah. he said, I've gone through many stripes and beatings, yeah. been hungry. Anybody know what I'm talking about yeah. today? Yeah. Uh, uh, Paul said, I've gone through so much, but God's grace yeah. kept me. How many of us know the grace of God keeping us in yeah. And we see this grace tonight in the text that Paul here being, being detained two years under uh, Caesar. Can I preach in this house? Man. That they decide that it's time to ship him uh, uh, to Rome. And, 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 and the Bible said there was other, other prisoners along with Paul that got into the ship and everything was cool. Uh, am I preaching to somebody now? Yeah. Have anybody ever made a plane where the waters were still? Right. And, and, and didn't see the, the, the storm that lied ahead? Oh, yeah. For the text says when they got into the ship, all of a sudden everything changed. Yeah. The winds got them so uh, so hard and, and, and beat the boat so 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 deadly and so tumultuous that they ended up in Crete uh -huh. when they were supposed to sail another way. Uh -huh. And the text said that the winds blew so hard that they even just turned whole turned loose of the stern wheel. Uh, how many of us know that sometimes you got to let Jesus have the wheel? Amen. Uh -huh. I wonder who I'm preaching to tonight that you've been trying to guide your life and every turn you make, you run into a dead end. Every time you, you put the signal light on, you look that cones up. Can I preach it here? But how many of us know if you just let Jesus 
be your GPA. Yeah. And, and the Bible says that when it got so bad within these 14 days that soon Paul stood up among the men and said, you know what, we are part of this ship. Uh -huh. That's right. Oh, he's called, Paul said, we are a partnership. We are not going no further. That's right. But the Bible says, just like some of us today, that uh, Julius was listening to the man who sailed the boat and said, uh -huh. we can go on. Uh -huh. And the text said, things even got worse. Mm -hmm. How many times in our lives have we tried to fix the problem mm -hmm. only to make the problem worse? Yeah. Am I preaching to anybody here tonight? <laughs> You know, I tried to fix that thing, but the more I tried to fix it, the worse it got. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And said the text said that, that the ship was beaten so bad that the men uh, uh, took bands and tied it around the back, around the, around the boat to keep it from breaking apart. That's right. And all of a sudden, midnight comes. After days of not seeing the sun and not seeing the stars at night. Mm -hmm. Paul stood up and said, don't worry, man. Nobody's going to be lost on this boat. Mm -hmm. For an angel of the Lord come in the midnight hour oh, yeah. and told me that not a hair would be lost. Oh, yeah. Can I just preach to somebody? Oh, yeah. I know you've been through a whole lot. But you, your life is still in God's hands. And no matter how it looks, and no matter how the wolves are blowing, and no how much the wind and the breakers are blessed, you get to know that God got your life in his hands. Yes. And so it was, after they had eaten and, and gotten up the next day, that they saw a bay. Uh -huh. And they sailed off the land that they didn't even know. But something happened. They ran up into a sandbar. Oh, yeah. And the boat broke a piece. Uh -huh. Some of the men said we ought to kill them unless they get away from us. But Paul, but but Judas said, leave them alone. <laughs> said, get to the shore the best way you can. Oh. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God will allow us to be in circumstances where we just have to hold on right. yes. to our dear life. That's right. I wonder who I'm preaching to tonight that you that you made some choices that, or it seemed to be that God put you through a process that now it looks like everything that you ever planned in your life is broken right before you. I'm here to let you know tonight you can drift on broken peace. I'm going to preach it here. How many of us know grace will get you through? I'm going to say it one more time. Told Paul once that my grace sufficient. is sufficient. Oh, yeah. Well, you say, bro, Pastor, you don't know what I've been going through. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. We've all had our share of ups and downs. Oh, yeah. You don't know how I got it. Yes, I know how you got it. That's Sin all. That hurts all of us. Right. Bad decisions hurt all of us. Yeah. And sometimes God just trying to get the best out of us, yeah. and He lets us go through stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. How is it that we can fix the people of God today? How can God fix us as a people today? I, I will share with you because I believe this story here, this text, is symbolic of the church uh -huh. and the people in the church. Uh -huh. Listen and carefully. Three reasons I say it's symbolic. Number one, if you're going to drift on broken pieces, you got to hear, mm -hmm. you got to trust, uh -huh. and you got to obey. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to say that one more time. Uh -huh. Hear, mm -hmm. trust, and obey. Uh -huh. You see, Paul then wouldn't have been in the worst shape they had gotten in if they, uh, if, uh, Jews had had to listen to what Paul had to say. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Paul had already told them, we need to dock right here. Mm -hmm. How many times have somebody told you, you don't have to do that, mm -hmm. but you thought you were big enough and bad enough to do what you wanted to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seen church people, I'm gonna say this right here. This will get a lot of church people because we come to the house of God and we don't want to hear nobody. Oh, yes. We think, oh, God talking to me. Yes, God do talk to you, but in life, we all got to hear somebody. Amen. My God from Zion. Over the 23 years of passion, I've seen people suffer because they didn't want to hear the word that God put in me. Oh, yeah. They felt like they knew God just as much as they, I did. Yeah. But that's not the point. The point is God put me there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know who I'm preaching to now. Yeah. Tell somebody, 
said, you got to hear somebody. Yeah. Not only do you got to hear somebody, you got to trust the God in somebody. Yeah. How am I going to witness it here? Yeah. Everybody can't be the chief and everybody can't have the last word. You got to trust in the God in somebody. If Julius had a trust in what Paul said, they wouldn't have been floating uh -huh. to the land. Uh -huh. But I like this last part, because I got my feeling somebody said obey. Okay. You see, because it ain't going to need to obey if you ain't got the first two right. All right. I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> Their lack of obedience uh -huh. put them in the position. Oh, yeah. That they were in. Yeah. And I look back even on my own personal life. My lack of obedience. And I'm sure you can look back over your life and say, your lack of obedience got you in the shape that you were in. How many of us know the Bible says obedience is better than any sacrifice? Uh -huh. Number two, if you're going to sell by the grace of God on broken pieces, you've got to cast away all the baggage of yesterday. Uh -huh. The text said that when the ship had gotten to a certain place, that it's, the winds and the waters would hit the ship so vehemently that not only did they tie ropes around the ship, but all of their tools and all the stuff they used to raise the sail, they tossed it over the boat. <laughs> Listen to me, and I'm going to tell you something real clear. Look at me clear. If you don't get rid of all the hurts, Man. you'll continue to hurt people. That's right. If you don't get rid of all the unforgiveness, oh, yeah. you'll still be mean. Can I preach it? If you don't get rid of all the bitterness, you still be a rotten root. Can I preach in this house? Touch your neighbor and say, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> you see, because the truth is, in order to save your life, sometimes you've got to lose it. Yeah. Which means you've got to give up how you feel. Yeah. Give up what you think about somebody and just trust God in his word. Yeah. I remember one time God told me, and I'm going to get out of the way, he said, Joe, you ain't forgave him yet. I said, yes, I did. I've been saying I've been forgiving him every day. He said, but you're saying it with your mouth, but your heart ain't. He said, go back in prayer and look deep within your heart, and I'll show you that you haven't forgiven him. And oftentimes we say stuff with our lips and we don't even mean it in our heart. And then we wonder why we're struggling in life and why God won't bless us, why God won't open the door, why God won't make a way out of nowhere, why God ain't doing this. And we're looking at somebody else and God blessing him and we're trying to figure out why God ain't blessing me. If he's the same, oh my God, if he don't respect the person, why don't he bless me? I'll tell you why he won't bless you. Number one, if you got sick, in your life, you ain't gonna be blessed to God. But number two, if you don't let everybody go, come on, somebody. I'm talking about all the way to your childhood, whoever hurt you, let them go. God will never elevate anybody who got unforgiveness in their heart. Touch your neighbor, say, throw it away. Get rid of all the bad. Last, I come to this and I close with this thought. <laughs> Hold on to God yeah. with all you got uh -huh. and don't let go. Mm -hmm. I like what Paul did in this text uh, because I'm skimming it because, uh, because of time strength. The text says, I, in the midst of this 14 days, 200 and, and maybe 50 some six people, 50, 56, 57 people have now gone three or four days with no sun uh -huh. and no stars. Uh -huh. The ship has been rocking. One of, one, of the, one of the anchors got stuck in the ground. Uh -huh. So therefore, they're not moving with the waves. Every time the wave go under, the boat crashes to the ground. Uh -huh. And then the waves are hitting them from this side. Uh -huh. Everybody on the boat is seasick. Anybody ever been seasick before in this circle? Uh -huh. Everybody on the boat is seasick. But all of a sudden, in the midnight hour, after the angel come and speak, Paul stands up and tells the men of God and all the prisoners say, look, I need you to do one thing. I need y'all to eat all you can eat because sun coming up in the morning. You know what the psalmist said? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, come on somebody, coming in the morning. Paul said, morning come, and you need to be ready for what God is about ready to do. And so the sun came out and they were sailed toward the 
be. Although the ship got run aboard, the, the whole thing broke apart in the back, but guess what? God was still in the mood. You see, when you position yourself for a blessing, when you let everybody go, come on somebody, when you trust, hear, and obey, guess what God about ready to do? He's about ready to open a door that no man can close. He's about ready to make a move in your life. He's about ready to, well, my God, anybody need a miracle in here tonight? That as the ship busted apart, uh -huh. the man said, whoever can swim, swim. <laughs> but if you can't swim, just grab your piece of wood <laughs> and float on me. Uh -huh. You see, sometimes you can swim. Oh, yeah. And then there are times when you need a life ring. Uh -huh. There are times when you can make it through your trials. With a smile. Uh -huh. And then there are times when stuff happens to you, you feel like you're about ready to fall apart. Uh -huh. But I got good news for you. Whether you're on the high hill Come or on. down in the valley low, uh -huh. my God is still the same. Uh -huh. I don't care whether you got money or you're broke and can't pay attention. My God is still the same. I don't care whether you got a friend or you got a whole lot of friends. done and I'm closing because I ain't got for two minutes. I have a little bit of boy come out of a church called Hester's Grove and I've been going to church ever since they can make me go. Now, how do much know old people made you go to church? Well young man I'm gonna stay home and watch TV and I'll see y'all when y'all get back and I'll be ready to play PlayStation when you return. No, if you will go in the church. In fact, I got a funny story. I stayed out one night all night long partying with my friends. I was in Easton in Easton Alamance House. I know y'all know that school. And I got home about two o'clock that night. Mama said, I don't care how late you stay up. I tell you what, Sunday morning, you better go to bed right now because you're going to be in that church the next day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? You I went. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make today is as I close. Don't let go of God. Amen. Even if you've made some bad decisions. Even if somehow your plan didn't line up with God's plan. And you found out it was his permissive will. Hold on to God. Even if you're struggling even in your flesh. And you got some sins that you're dealing with. And yet oftentimes your problems get you in trouble. Hang in there with God. Because how many of us know God is able? Yeah. Yeah. More than able yeah. to finish whatever he started in your life. Yeah. How many of us know God is able to pick you up? Come yeah. on, son. Yeah. If I got to pick up Christian yeah. in here tonight, God is able to pick you up and turn your life around and put you on a solid ground. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you today, if God could change Saul and call him Paul, yeah. Yeah. If, jo if God could change the old chocolate fellow like myself, yeah. Yeah. He can change you. That's right. But I promise you one thing, it won't be easy. But the good news is there's grace yes. to let you grab onto whatever broken piece you have and float to Satan. Will you give the Lord a hand praise? God bless you. God bless you. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. 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 I know we can bless the Lord one more time. And we join in the life of this church as well as in the life of this man. Amen. Amen. See, some people think it's easy to get behind the sacred death and share the good news. But it ain't as easy as it looks. But I'm here to tell you. All you got to do is hold on right. to God's unchanging hand. Thank you, Pastor. For coming and sharing with little old Jones Grove. Yeah. We may be what, what they call small and known. Yeah. But we serve a big God. That's why he's in the cause we serve a big God. I ain't worried about the number. As long as we got God, everything's going to be all right. As long as two or three are gathered in his name, I know everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Uh, I tell you, thank you. If there's anything that John Grove can do for Hester Grove, you let us know. And we'll show up. If it be the Lord's will, we'll stop on by. All right. But we'll show up and leave the light on for you. <laughs> stop on by. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, very quickly, very quickly, uh, this coming Saturday, this coming Saturday at 11 a.m., uh, the uh, ushers uh, will be having a meeting here. All ushers to ask to come at 11. We'll also be having, we're asking all our youth to also come at 11 p.m. as well, if I'm not mistaken. Is it 12? Okay. 12 noon to come as well. It's open to the public. It's open to everyone. Come, sir or ma'am, bring your children, bring your youth, that we may be able to have a good time with them. They're going to be having games. they are going to be having food. But more important, we're just going to have God. And we're going to be able to fellowship with one another. So it is open for all those that would like to come as well. Also, uh, this coming Friday, this coming Friday at 7 p.m., uh, the, the church, Jones Grove, as well as this pastor and the choir, will be going to New Life, non-denominational uh, church in uh, Roxborough with uh, Pastor uh, Ronald Brooks and being able to share with him. And then uh, also this coming Sunday, uh, it is a special Sunday. Uh, for many in the what they call the Christian church, what they call Palm Sunday. Uh, this is a, a momentous occasion where they will call you Hosanna. But starting that Passion Week, they'll go from celebrating to, to putting you up on a cross and letting you die for a poor sinner like you and for me. Amen? Amen. So please, sir, man, please do govern yourselves accordingly. For the afternoon service, we'll be going to Kai's Chapel uh, to be able to fellowship with them. And then also uh, the, the 15th through the 19th, the 15th through the 19th, all next week, starting at 7 p.m., all are welcome to come to Lee's Chapel. Lee's Chapel will be having their Passion Week service uh, for, for Monday through Thursday. All proceeds, all proceeds will be going to the Central Children's Home. Mm -hmm. So please, sir or ma'am, even if you cannot come, send an offering with somebody that they may be able to bless the children yes. in a special, special way. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then on Friday night, uh, of that Friday afternoon, we'll be in New Home in Durham. So uh, we'll have our very own uh, Reverend uh, Gwendolyn Jordan and others to be able to preach the seven last sayings at 12 p.m. And then even that evening, that 7 p.m. at Leeds Chapel, they will also be having their seven last sayings uh, service as well. Yes, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. But the least you can do is tell somebody uh, that you love and there's nothing you can do about it. There's a lot going on, but you still can tell somebody God is good. There's a lot going on, but you can still hold on to God's unchanging hand. I know it's a lot going on, but I'm here to tell you, God will make a way. Amen? Are there any other announcements before we ask the pastor to come forth that he may be able to bring forth a benediction? I do want to thank uh, Sister Leslie as well as the choir for bringing forth a momentous songs. And we want to thank Hester Grove for sharing and coming and being with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any other announcements? Amen. Pastor, if you would, please. In your own special way, give us our benediction. God bless you. May heaven smile upon each and every last one. Thank you again, uh, for listening to this old country boy. Amen. God, God is truly good. And I tell you what, I, I've learned over the years, He loves us so much. Amen. 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 Yeah, I want to say to the members of Hell's Road that did make it out tonight, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Chairman, and all the rest of you. We love you. And, I, I tell you what, I, I hope I behave. You know, my mom used to always tell me, if you go to somebody's house, you need to behave. Amen. They won't invite you back. Amen. If all hearts are satisfied, we can come to you. Jesus is the answer for the world today. All the men's love Jesus is Tonight. We thank you for your spirit 
But we know if we gather in your name, you will show up and show out. So we thank you tonight. We pray, Father, that the word of God touch so many hearts tonight. Not only in this building, but also out there in social media. Just remember that God loves you. Thank you, Father, for using this vehicle to touch souls and remind them how good you love us even in the midst of our hurts and our pain. So, Father, as we close tonight, we close knowing that you, 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 you've done everything that we can imagine a thing. So give us traveling mercies as we hand over. Give us the benedictory grace to reach our destination. Then we may see our loved ones and shout your name in praise. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide for us and evermore. Let those that love the Lord say amen. 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 Shake somebody's hand and tell me you love me.